So not long ago, I was in your show applying to chiropractic school and one of the hurdles you soon have to face is the interview. Today, I want to talk about five things that has helped me into preparing my interview and ultimately securing an offer. Hi friends, my name is Calvin. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm a first year chiropractic student in Toronto, Canada. And today I will be talking about my interview process at Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College and share with you five things that has helped me tremendously in preparing my chiropractic interview. Everything will be time stamped and stay till the end because in the final tip I will share with you how I was able to connect with a top chiropractor in Toronto for her advice and guidance. The first thing I want to talk about is how you need to understand the interview format. May it be a panel interview that usually feels more like a conversation or in the format of multiple mini interview, aka MMI, which usually breaks down the entire interview process into mini stations that usually assess for one specific quality. The reason why I think this is very important is because you will want to practice under the same settings and also Panel-based interview and MMI interview are quite different in nature. In my opinion, I think panel-based interview is more about building a rapport with the admission panelist through storytelling and emotion exchange. Whereas in an MMI interview, you will have to utilize your critical thinking skills to pinpoint what they're assessing and following by packaging your answers in a succinct manner. So in my experience at CMCC, it is a video recorded MMI interview. And when I was preparing for it, I found questions online and I would repeatedly filming myself responding to these questions to make sure I have good eye contact, to make sure I've, I'm well mannered. And one thing that stood out is that before answering those questions, I almost always think for a few seconds to make sure I understood what the question is assessing and follow by using a specific response structure that I'll be talking about in point number three. Before going into the response structure, the second thing I want to talk about is how you will need to research deeper on the qualities they are specifically looking for. And more importantly, what those qualities would mean in the context of the profession. To take CMCC and chiropractic SD example, you can simply look for the core competencies that are usually shown online. And here on the school website, they clearly say they want their prospective students to demonstrate to be a communicator, collaborator, manager, health advocate, scholar, and a professional. So in order to understand what these competencies would mean in professional life for chiropractor, what I did was to reach out for work experience, and I'm beyond lucky to have shadowed several chiropractors, which allowed me to observe how these competencies would take part in their day-to-day -day handling of their patients and their staffs. However, if work experience is not possible for you, don't worry, it is usually not a requirement, but you may really want to check out this document known as the standards of practice from the chiropractic regulating body in your area. And in Ontario, the regulating body here is the College of Chiropractors of Ontario. And on their website, you look for a page, usually says the standards of practice. And essentially, standards of practice is a authoritative statement that sets up the framework of the legal and the professional basis of the chiropractic practice. To give you guys an example, Attaining an informed consent is incredibly important as part of the doctor-patient interaction. And I think it would require professionalism and communication skills. Therefore, just by thinking through this, you can relate back to the past experiences you have that can demonstrate similar qualities. Now, I've put the link down below and I definitely recommend reading it before preparing your response. The third thing I want to talk about is the culture of ethics in the chiropractic profession and how you can build your answers around some of the principles. To find out what code of ethic is, I would like to direct you to the Canadian Chiropractic Association, which is the ethical body of the profession in Canada. And on the website, you can access to a page called the Code of Ethics. And to highlight one important principle here, it says that the golden rule of a chiropractor 
is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I think the essence of this principle is really about doing no harm and always serving at the patient's best interest. And if you were to reference this ethical principle in one of the questions, say the professionalism questions, you can easily talk about one time how you look into the risk and benefits and ultimately made a decision where benefits outweighs the risk. Now I hope you can start to see how this principle can guide you and establish the premise of your response in a way that would greatly resonate with the chiropractic profession. Again, the link is down below in the description and I highly recommend you to read it. The fourth thing I want to talk about is the STAR L response framework. In most cases of interview, they ask about behavioral type questions. And behavioral type questions is essentially all about asking you to explain a specific action you have taken part in a specific situation. And the STAR L response framework is particularly useful for these type of questions. In the STAR L format, the first S stands for situation that you were involved in. The T stands for the task that you're responsible for. The A stands for the action that you have took part. The R stands for the result, meaning the outcome result that your action have yielded. And finally, the L stands for learning, meaning the lesson or reflection that you have gained from the experience. To give you guys an example of how you can use the STAR L framework, I would like to use this question. Tell me a time when you have to resolve a conflict. And this is the way how I would respond. During one of my research projects, my colleague has called in sick and I have to take care of his patients. In this research project, I was responsible in teaching recovering stroke patients some manual tasks, which is essentially some finger exercises. The conflict occurs when one of the patients has refused to listen to me because of him feeling more comfortable working with my colleagues. I listened and validated his concerns, but at the same time, I reassured to this patient that I'm also a well-trained individual. I even demonstrated some of the exercises myself to develop some confidence from him and trust. Through several rounds of answering his questions, finally, he has agreed to work with me. We completed the exercises and for safe to say we got some pretty good data points. And throughout this experience, I learned the importance of active listening and also being patient, which are qualities that I think a successful chiropractor should have. So there we go. I hope this example would clarify how you can use the STAR L framework to structure your answer. And I hope you find this helpful. Finally, use social media to seek first-hand advice from existing students, graduates, or even alumni chiropractors. At the time, I didn't know many people in the field, and I remember I was totally leveraging on social media platforms such as LinkedIn and Instagram to connect with people at the school I was applying. All I did was to send out a simple yet professional message that hopefully will catch the attention. In my opinion, LinkedIn is a great platform in professional setting. And taking the first step is important because you'll be surprised of the amount of nice people around the world who would offer guidance. My advice to you is that your message has to be specific because that could really show us how much you're interested in the school. Through this method, I was beyond lucky to have connected with one of the top chiropractors in Toronto and our conversation has left me nothing but invaluable advice that has greatly benefited my interview preparation and my understanding in the school community. Thank you so much for watching this video. These are my five tips on the chiropractic school interview. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up down below. This really means a lot to me. If you'd like to see more videos, please consider subscribing I will be making more videos on the chiropractic school student life. And finally, if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. And I will be seeing you in the next video.